you know, you're speaking a language that I think resonates with most people, Mm -hmm. but you're holding fast to certain moral realities that you are willing to clearly say, this is a moral reality. You know, it's wrong to kill a baby in the womb. Um, You know, you talk about marriage, you talk about uh, abstinence, like we don't, you know, going around sleeping with a bunch of women is not the way to go. I mean, you're you're sharing these messages. So how, what shapes that? I mean, we, you mentioned Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you yeah. know, the the number one influence. But where did you get that more unique sh- voice? Because it is it is sure. pretty unique on today's scene. Yeah. I would, I, would I, I feel like it is. I don't see it a lot. Yeah. I mean, like Tony Robbins, you know, will profess some of your ideals maybe in some mm-hmm. of the stuff he says. But he's never going to be brave and say abortion's wrong and yeah. like go out and be um, courageous, a courageous vo- voice for that kind of a moral, moral truth in a, in a world yes. where you know, 60 million children have been killed in the U.S. alone. Right. So this isn't just some tiny social problem. It's like the greatest one. Yeah. Well, I think the, the reality is that we live in a time and in a society and perhaps we always have where people don't want to rock the cart. People don't want to rock the boat. People don't want to. Um, risk offending other people, stepping on other people's toes, being criticized, being called names, being called any type of you know bigot or phobe or ism or schism. But do um, they do they not want to rock certain boats? Because like Bill Gates, I think some people hate him. Yeah, for the vaccines, or they hate you know va- vaccinating malnourished populations, mm-hmm. and they're saying, oh, that's just for your big pharma, or they hate him for pro-abortion stuff. Yeah. But so he doesn't care about some people's opinions, No, but there's other p- opinions he cares about. So it's like, yes. whose opinions do you care about? Is that a personal question for me? Yeah. Well, yeah. And also like you're saying that large is this sense of people yeah. don't want to get in trouble for what they say. Yeah. I, on, a, on a deep level, if you want, if you want the deep answer, I would say that I fear God, then I don't fear humans. All right. I'm not afraid of being, I'd rather be canceled by man than canceled by God. All right. And I, I mean that on a deep level. Right, not just saying it as a as a cool soundbite, but I do not have this fear that most other people do of oh my gosh, if I say the wrong thing or I tweet the wrong thing, I'm going to be canceled or I'm going to lose my job or they're going to come at my sponsors or this or that. And you know, I have also put myself in a position in terms of my career and my finances and how I've set up my life that I'm largely autonomous and independent. I mean, we all rely on other people to some degree. But I'm not someone who's just mm-hmm. got an employer who people can like ring up and you know complain to my manager and you know get me to lose something. I'm, as an, even as a musician, I'm independent. I run mm-hmm. and control my own label, and you know I distribute my music independently. My podcast is totally independent. Mm-hmm. Everything I do is independent. I don't have a lot of these attack vectors where if I'm courageous, but I've got cowards behind me, then they throw me under mm-hmm. the bus. So I've positioned myself in a strong position. But even outside of that, I don't, if I'm saying something that I know is true, or I simply believe to be correct, I mean, what's the point of having freedom of speech if you are terrified to use it, Hmm. right? In our countries, in the UK, in the USA, and all these nations, people say, oh, freedom of speech, freedom, liberty, you know, Mm -hmm. fight, 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 fight. People say all this stuff, but then they're absolutely terrified to say what they actually believe, right? How many people in this country were afraid to say that they voted for Trump? How many of the people in this country are afraid to openly, publicly tell people that they're Christians? I'm How afraid ma- to say I didn't vote for Trump. It depends Cancel. who you're talking Cancel. to. No, yeah. but you'll get, you know, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But it depends who you're talking to, to some degree. Yeah, right. But so what <laughs> I'm am I- not, I have shared that publicly, but, <laughs> but the point is I get more flack in yeah. the world that I'm in. Mm-hmm. I get more flack a thousand percent for saying, yeah, I didn't you vote didn't. for Trump yeah. than for saying that I do. So yes. it depends on your, yeah. On so it world. depends on what the present company mm-hmm. you're in is or who your tribe online is or whatever, right? Because people want you to fit very cleanly into a box. And then every mm-hmm. assumption they have about that box, they just apply to you and everyone else who they've thrown into it. And that means you don't need to get to know a person, mm-hmm. right? There's no nuance there. It's just, okay, you fit this box, so I just expect you mm. to adopt all these other things and to have done all these other things, believe all these other things, cool, nice, clean. Um, and it, it's a very sort of binary view. I, I joked on, um, I, I said it jokingly, but I think it was maybe one of my more profound comments the first time I was ever on Joe Rogan. And I said, we're living in a day and age where politics is binary, but gender is a spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> right? So it's like people want to fit people in very clean, mm. Boxes, you know, you're on the left, you're on the right, you know, you're a red, you're a blue, 
and you're all these things or you're all these things and there's no nuance, mm-hmm. there's no middle ground, there's no nothing. Um, well, they, it's funny because then- the, the, the left does pick their black and white moral issues. Mm-hmm. But absolutely. they're just like the inverse, like, you know, even like with abortion. Oh, absolutely. You should have the right to mm-hmm. have an abortion. It's like it's black and white for that. But yeah. then another moral issue is they're going to say it's all nuance and gray. Yeah. I mean, there's the same people who are saying, you know, that you know, a man can be a woman or a woman can be a man or you can be neither or you can make up your own whatever. And then two mm-hmm. seconds later, it's, you know, follow the science, listen to the, you know, it's like, well, you know, make up, make up your mind. Mm-hmm. But um, I guess all human beings are critical to some degree. <laughs> nobody's uh, nobody's mm. perfect with it. Yeah. So for you, when you're on this journey to influence millions of people, what do you, and you want them to be healthier, I think you yeah. talked about their physical health and you want there to be more peace, but what is, you know, you've lived a really interesting life. You've been in Saudi, you, you know, spent years growing up in Saudi Arabia, mm-hmm. UK, you've cr- traveled the world. How many countries have you been to? Uh, 37, I think. 37 countries. Yeah. What's your favorite country, by the way? I have different ones for different reasons. Okay. Yeah. Nuance. <laughs> yeah. Nuance. Nuance. Different things. You know, there's mm-hmm. places I like to visit, but I maybe wouldn't want to live there. So USA I, would be. Um, is that USA? I, the USA is my favorite country in certain aspects. Mm. It's the best country for. It's the one that I have the most fans and supporters in. Um, it's the one that most majority of my business comes from. Um, it's got incredible diversity. It is still, hmm. I think, the country with the greatest opportunity overall, regardless of who you are or what sector you are in. This, you know, there's a reason that hmm. the American dream is an existing term. There's no such thing as the French dream or the British dream or the Australian dream. The American dream is a real thing. It's why so many immigrants can come over to this country and just, you know, crush it because they can take advantage. They can see number one and then take advantage mm-hmm. and feel grateful for all these opportunities that perhaps a lot of native people themselves don't even see because they're just used to it and it's their default and they haven't really seen outside of it. So they take it for granted. Um, so the USA is great in many regards. Um, you know, I, I, I like the UK, but I wouldn't want to live there again. Um, obviously, I'm drawn to you know, I grew up in Saudi Arabia. I do like Saudi. I'm drawn mm-hmm. to the middle the, the Middle East in general. I like the UAE. Um, I like a lot of European countries. I've been to, you know, Czech Republic many times. I liked it over there. I've been to Hungary. I liked it over there. I like Central and Eastern Europe in general because I think they've got a good balance between, uh, for lack of better terms, conservatism and liberalism. They're still kind of like, they're just sane. You kind of have all the rights and freedoms Mm. that you would in somewhere like the UK, but they haven't gone, they haven't gone woke. They haven't gone into all the nonsense. They've maintained some of their traditions and things like that. Um, but there's so many beautiful parts of the world. I, I've been to a lot of countries, but I genuinely feel like I've barely scratched the surface. Mm. I, there's, I haven't even set foot in South America. Um, oh, wow. That's going to be a big one. Yeah. How many countries do we have, right? We were talking about this earlier. So um, you said 195. It depends on exactly how they're counted. 195. Yeah, okay. most, most people would say 195 or 196. Okay. So I think you've it, got... it can go up to like 205, I think, if you include like not, you know, you have these kind of like independent territories mm-hmm. and things like that. It depends on how you count it. Okay. Yeah. But you're already at 37. I think I'm only at like 15 or something. 15 is so fantastic. You're, but you're 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 getting there. I mean, so <laughs> when you go to Latin America, I'm gonna I'm curious what your thoughts are gonna be. Yeah. But going back to like, so you've been all these places. What do you think is the most important thing missing today in public discourse? That is Ooh. basically that people because they they don't understand it. This thing, these things, they're miserable. They're mm. hurting each other. They're hurting themselves. I would say perspective and gratitude. Hmm. And this is one of the reasons why I'm a big advocate for travel and an advocate Mm -hmm. for free flow of conversations because we all have a default, right? If you are born and raised in Los Angeles and you barely leave California and you've never left the USA, your default is a certain mindset and way of seeing the world and you're surrounded by people who also are going to see the world the same way and you you know yeah there yeah there'll be some diversity there intellectually and in other ways but it's a very limited perspective um if somebody is born and raised in i don't know in jeddah in saudi arabia and they've never left the country they've never been to the west at all they haven't even been to other arab countries that like that's just what they see and what they know or you know someone raised in a village in china or where, wherever it is it doesn't matter that's that's everyone's that's your baseline that's your default but if that's all you have 
then sure, you can meet people from other places and you know you can read Wikipedia articles and you can go on Google and learn and read books about other places. But until you actually go somewhere and you meet people and you experience the culture and the way of life and the climate and just the way things look and all of that, you won't have a you won't have a great baseline because you have nothing to compare to, mm. right? So I think it's good to just even have different reference points to compare things to. So the, the way even you being able to ask me the question, like, what is your favorite country? If I'd only been to one, <laughs> yeah. I, I'd just be like, well, you know, England, right? That's where I was born. It's the mm. best, right? And it's like, well, how do you know? Like, you haven't mm. been anywhere else. You might think England is the best. And who knows? Maybe it could be out of the one of you, you know? Or you idealize a country you've never been to or don't yeah. really understand. Yeah. yeah. And, and I find that traveling absolutely gives people a, a wider perspective. Mm. And with that perspective comes a sense of gratitude. And that, and that goes in all directions. It gives you a better perspective and gratitude for your own home country. You can actually see the things, you know, as an American who's traveled to 14 or 15 other countries, and you have those reference points, you can go, hey, look, these are the things the USA actually is doing really well at. These are the things that are great, that we should be proud of, that we can. And then you can also be, you know, these are also things we can improve on, right? I went to this country and that country, and you know, I was in Europe and like, actually the food quality was a lot better, right? The food wasn't full of garbage ingredients. Not everything was full of soy and vegetable oil and high fructose corn syrup. And I could eat the wheat and I didn't feel bloated and this and that. So, oh, maybe we could learn some things from Europe. Oh, you know what? I went to that place and the way that they manage this aspect or their architecture or whatever, it's actually way better than it is over here. Like, yeah, I mean, the, you, you can't debate with architecture in <laughs> yeah, Europe so, and most so, of Europe because yeah, so, it's just old and beautiful. Exactly. Modern, right? Most of modern architecture is just mm -hmm. such a, it's horrible. an unbelievable nightmare. <laughs> There's a few yeah. bright spots, but it's just like, what were we thinking? 